What up, guys? Uh, Carlos, back at it. Um, gonna work on this guy today. He's the easy to build, one of the easy to build plague marines. And I wanted to, this is the third take, so I'm hoping that this is the one. Anyhow, I've base coated with War Colors Black, and I am ready to start into the next stage. Colors being used dark sea blue, War Colors. Uh, black and golden heavy body white the old standbys old faithful so right now I'm applying pure dark sea blue over this area right here and in here so I'm kind of envisioning a Xenophil highlight as usual uh, starting over the right shoulder this time and we're gonna do a bit of a kind of split up almost non-metallic highlight on this on this pauldron I do, uh, I am planning on weathering uh, this section of, well I'm going to weather the entire thing, I've already started in, so once you begin, you must continue. And uh, I'm going to go for a little bit of a rough uh, blend, uh, because it'll probably be a little easier and it'll be something um, that I can accomplish in the prescribed amount of time. So. Uh, this is again 3.0 so I've had a couple chances at this just can't seem to capture it I I, uh, I wonder if I think I, I need to kind of like figure out the settings on that on that camera a little bit I think that's one of the reasons uh, that I've been struggling so that was actually a kind of a medium layer of dark sea blue and white and I'm going to sort of try to feather it out a little bit over here on this edge um, it's a little cold in here. We have uh, it's been warm, so the AC is running. So I might have a little bit of time. If you're doing this in a hot environment and it's drying out quickly, um, you don't necessarily need to go back as quickly as I did. It's really like a lot of this is based on feel. It's based on like what you're seeing, how the paint is behaving when you're doing it. So when I'm applying these and I see that the paint isn't drying, like that gives me an opportunity to kind of go back in and uh, touch things up. So if, if you're, like I said, if you're in a hotter environment and you're, it's drying out quickly, then you're just gonna have to wait for it to dry rather than go back because what'll happen is you'll kinda like, you'll create little holes in your layers and then it's gonna just cause you more work. So <clears throat> one of the important things about doing our black is we want to make sure that we preserve the black so if we if we go over with too much dark sea blue or a highlight gets out of control we can always glaze back in with our black and one of the things i haven't i haven't primer this figure but if you if you do uh, primer with black i really don't know if there's any blacks out there that have like a one-to-one -one with a paint i know that uh, i believe army painter one of their promises is that their sprays will be one-to-one -one with their paints so that's something to keep in mind if you are um, you know you want to try to do that I've tried uh, with a couple different things and actually I think it was Steinal Res and then I went back in uh, to correct a black with the uh, Vallejo black and the Vallejo black was significantly more matte than the Steinal Res so anyhow um, so I've established my roughest highlights and I'm just going to kind of grab this edge a little bit, put a little bit of paint there. This is about a 50-50 mix of dark sea blue and black over here to this edge and then on this edge. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to sort of smooth it out a little bit. The, the thing is, is that we need to maintain the black but we also need to put in our highlights. So when you're doing it, it's going to look a little gray, or it might look gray. I don't know if you're if you're just, uh, you know, if you if you've been at it a while, maybe you're able to kind of keep your highlights where they need to be. But for me, like, um, what was I saying? Okay, so it might look a little gray, but that's nothing really to get concerned about. Especially even after you would consider yourself done, I'd say move on to another section. Because look at this. Look at the hand. This is the hand that I showed, and I think compared to some of the other parts it does look maybe a little bit grayish but on its own I think that it, it looks black in the picture it looked black so anyhow we've kind of got like a little bit of a we've got a little bit of black uh, or we've got our highlights starting to happen and 
so what we can do is is we can go back in and we want to keep our glaze relatively thin and we can kind of work back over this area with our with our dark sea blue and black mix and this is just to ensure again that we are keeping the black uh, very dominant we don't want to get too blue because then it will if you get too blue it starts to look a little silvery which you know isn't necessarily the end of the world if you if you want like a, a really polished finish which I'm not necessarily going to do but if you want I, I mean this will not come out that way but if you wanted a highly polished finish then you can kind of preserve a bit more of the blue um, it kind of there it crosses a like a threshold like I'd say the back tack Backpack kind of isn't quite as dark as it needs to be, so I'm, I'm still working on that area, but um, the leg, I think we're, we're already, looks like we're off to a good start. So I'm just gonna do our, kind of our broken highlight. I want this guy to be rough, and so I don't wanna go too smooth. If you're going for smoothness, you're just gonna need to do more glazes, more applications of your uh, of your um, your smoothing layers, your black layers, your blue layers, and that kind of thing. So I'll add a little bit right here. We're going to capture that center line. Okay, I want to make sure I'm on camera. The phone, despite it being larger, I, th I feel like the camera on the iPhone is, it just, it works better for me than the C920. I'm, I'm not abandoning the C920. Uh, I picked one up at the, at the advice of uh, Shoshi Miniature Paint, which by the way, she's a great person. Uh, I just kind of contacted her out of the blue. <laughs> I was like, man, your videos are tremendous. How can I be like you? And she was like, oh, I just use this camera. So she was like, totally not afraid of hooking me up. And you know, she didn't buy it for me, but she just gave me that hot, that hot tip. So I was like, oh, nice. And uh, I was like, yeah, I want to wanna do that. I want to do what you're doing. The, the white balance too, I was having a little bit of trouble with the white balance, the color was shifting in the middle of the video, it was out of focus, on and on, right, on and on, when is he ever going to get back to painting, when are we going to stop with the, uh, with the whining, alright, so uh, towards the edge of the boot, I might do a little, just a little bit of some texture, a little roughness, if you want to get, you know, if, if you're doing something that you want to spend a little, or you want it to stand out, let's say it was like on a hero, you can you can do more of this. This is all part of our weathering. So we go into different areas, and not only does it add weathering, but it's going to sort of break up the surface, and it's going to create kind of, um, it's going to do a little bit of blending for you if we go back in here with some of our other colors, and all this is kind of is gonna what the way I the theory should be listen to me just stumble over words the theory should be is that it's gonna kinda break up the surface so at first blush when you look at it with your eyes your eyeballs you're gonna see that and it's gonna kinda translate to your eye oh that's a rough surface that's a pitted and uh, dotted dented surface or we hope um, a lot of the a lot of my tricks I've kind of, I've been working on a bust, a privateer press bust, and uh, a lot of the tricks that we use for miniature painting, I have n noticed, uh, don't necessarily make the translation. The bust is uh, unforgiving of a lot of this stuff, but on little guys, I don't know, it seems like it works better, which is weird because the scale, you would think, would be slightly kind of out of scale, but yet, yet it doesn't, so I don't know. So we're going back over this, and this, like these uh, acrylic kind of covering layers or whatever whatever layers or filters you choose to apply over the surface they will kind of tend to unify it a little bit so if you do some of this and it doesn't look quite right maybe give it a glaze or two before you repaint it and kind of like see what you got you know see see if you if it is as bad as you think it is which I'm you know I'm not saying that people are bad painters what I'm saying is, is like it I'm just kind of this is my internal monologue talking where when I'm looking at something I'm like oh how come that's not perfect <laughs> everything I paint should be perfect the first time but sadly it's not and that's one of the things that you know I don't try I'm not trying to make videos that are um, just kind of I don't want to complain too much I guess is what I'm saying because you know, people come to YouTube, they want content, they want information, they don't necessarily want to listen to the, uh, the, 
the sad diary of somebody who just can't get their camera settings right, for example. So it's like a balance of me trying to figure out what works best and what is valuable. And that's one of the reasons I didn't use, unfortunately, two of the videos that I shot. The initial one on the Chaplin was, uh, man, I'm just like rambling without even explaining what I'm doing. So what I'm doing here is I applied the dark sea blue. It was actually a little bit, uh, it had already been mixed a little bit with our white. And I just kind of went into the top. And for me, the way I work, and this is probably not the most efficient way, but I tend to kind of like rough in uh, highlights and that kind of thing and then kind of work backwards or work from the middle out. So there's not really one set way that I do it. And again, I apologize to the people at home who um, do not like, like that particular style. All I can say is that I, right now I'm being very faithful to the process. <laughs> So that's, this is this is the way this is the way I do it and um, you know uh, I in in while I was doing this video I was kind of like just looking on YouTube and then I ran into a, a recently just like a couple days ago or yesterday uh, Cujo if you don't if you haven't subscribed to him he didn't ask me to and we don't really I've asked him I've talked to him a couple times on Facebook but uh, I'm not affiliated with him and nor he with me. He's an excellent painter. I think he has a Patreon. He does it so that like you can watch his videos for like a day later, a week later, and without any kind of um, commitment. And then he also posts his videos, uh, you know, a little bit afterwards. So anyhow, I'm going back in. I did the white. Uh, I'm kind of glazing in some blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit more blue and try to recover our blue and then I'm going to recover the black. So like I was saying, it's depending on the surface and that's one of the things, this knee pad is kind of circular so I'm sort of, I'm going a little bit differently. Uh, working a little bit, <clears throat> I wouldn't say step by step, but I'm, I'm not necessarily following the same step I did for the, uh, for the leg pauldron or sabaton or whatever it is. So I'm working back in my black. How are we looking? We're looking okay. So as far as scratches goes, uh, I might just add maybe a couple more. And this is purely for demonstrative purposes. I'd kind of like, I'd reevaluate if it were, you know, when I when I do it later, I'll probably have a look and see what what I did. But this is just so you can sort of see some of the things that you can do. And this, uh, what I'm using right here is dark sea blue plus white. Very, pretty thin, but not too thin. Uh, I don't have an approximation on consistency. It's just, it's the right consistency. And unfortunately, that's not super helpful. But anyhow, doing a little bit more. Those are a little bright. So again, I might do a glaze layer over that to sort of uh, beat it back again. You know, tone it, tone it back down. The same also applies though you need to be more sparing as you can you can incorporate back your other your other colors and bring it back over the white. And so the, all of this is just going to kind of diffuse on the surface. I think it's the autofocus. Maybe it's the autofocus of the uh of the iPhone that kind of helps me since I seem to be unable to keep the miniature right under the uh right under the lens. We'll highlight under these uh holes. Catch some of those little bolts. There we go. Okay. Catch some of this since these are right at the front of the boot. Now that's a bit bright on that center line. See that right there? That's a little. It's a little bright. I might tweak it. I might have a look at it, but you can see this is just black over here. This is with our highlight. So again, and very important, you need to, and I don't know if it's expressed on camera, but you need to kind of like look at it and make sure it has enough black in it. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't. Just know that if you don't, if you don't necessarily have all the, like as much black as maybe uh, I would or, or, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is if it doesn't have enough, it's not it's not going to look quite black. But then again, it may it may be a pleasing result. So it's kind of uh, it's in the eye of the beholder, right? So I'm just kind of working in some black on the middle. And over here, not too much, just a little bit. All right, so that's kind of a rough, beaten up uh, leg plate. And I had a couple different, a couple different surfaces here. There was a round surface, and here we have like a cylindrical object. And this is kind of a, another, I guess, another cylinder. So let's do a little bit of weathering. First thing that we can do is we can get a little bit of our this uh, orange. It's a light rust. Um, from Vallejo it's kind of like a desaturated orange it's kind of tricky um, I was using it yesterday I wasn't I wasn't really feeling it but we'll just we'll put a little bit all over the place and if you wanted to uh, underline your scratches the light rust uh, you can sort of what you can do over the scratch is sort of like give it like it makes it and I did this in the white video it gives it uh, like a little bit of a a glaze of rust over the scratch like it was scratched and then uh, you know it started to rust after the fact so that's kind of what that does for us and I'll get a little bit this will be a, this will actually remain so instead of a glaze consistency I'll get maybe a layer consistency of light rust and I'll hit some of these wow that light is really changing hit some of these bolts so that's starting to flow right there on that first bolt. So let me just make sure, let's just drag it down, do a little streak action. There we go. Nothing too serious. And as long as you, as long as you start off relatively light, you know, we're, it's, it's not going to be irreversible. So that's just good, uh, good, good way to practice or good way to use this in your own applications. Just keep everything sort of relatively light I like that bolt I didn't quite I didn't get that top of that with the uh, with the white so I might go back and correct that a little bit we can get into the uh, into the crevice here put a little rust in there so just like with our with our highlights we don't want to be too regular with the rust you can be but I don't know to me, it just doesn't look quite right, so I, I like a little bit of an irregular appearance. So while that's drying, I'm going to get the dark rust. And this color, I really like it. Um, I'm not necessarily saying you should buy it. It's kind of like a more reddish brown. I really like it. Uh, it's not quite a burnt umber. It's a little bit less uh, red than, say, a burnt umber. It just, I don't know, it seems to be a very versatile color. So I've been using it a lot, and it's also... Um, I don't know. I like it. Anyhow, this is the dark rust, and this, uh, you know, in the in the classic uh, in the classic sense, the camera may not pick this up, but if you examine it closely or you take pictures, uh, you probably will see the dark rust. We can use it also to make uh, little pits on the surface. No paints coming off the paintbrush. There's one. Uh, it's a little bit too much. And if I was closer uh, and wasn't, you know, wasn't doing this without my glasses, I'd, I'd try to get a little bit more precious with it. But for now, I'll just kind of like try to add a couple pits over here, maybe along the edges. A little vertical scratch. And again, just adding flavor, adding spice, adding variety. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really, uh, there's no theory at work here. Just kind of weathering, having some fun. And again, without my oils, this is what I'm reduced to, guys. I got to work with acrylics, and they are fast drying. So it can be, sometimes you have happy accidents, and then other times you're like, oh, dear God, what happened? So know your materials, as usual, water safe. Save for the uh, save for the family dog and that kind of thing. Reclaim that little guy right there. Maybe put a couple dings up here. So that's pretty much 
that is how I would do it. The Chaplin, I went for a bit more smoothness uh, on this guy. I'm going to keep it nice and rough like it looks hammered or corroded. I may add a little bit more rust and that kind of thing as you see right here. I've been trying to work in. Come on. Come on now. You can do it. You can do it, iPhone. Focus. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to add in a bit more of the rust like I did up here. So I may do that down here, but that is that is it. That's that's black in a nutshell, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, like if you like, comment if you feel so inclined. Really appreciate you guys watching the videos, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.